Okay, we have a straightforward exercise here. We're given a diameter of eight feet, and we're finding the length of this red arc given a 45 degree angle. And this is the formula we were given where we have the arc length of, or arc length here, in this case of AB, is equal to the measure of AB out of 360 times um, pi D, which is the circumference. We're using pi D because we know the diameter little bit of substitution and we know 45 um, is the central angle so this is going to be 45 out of 360 now you all know a quarter of a circle is 90 and uh, cut that in half again you got 45 so that's going to be an eighth so you should be familiar with this fraction 45 degrees would represent one eighth of the circle which has a circumference of 8 pi so one eighth of eight pi. This is why you don't jump to your calculators right away. Leave your calculators down. Look at this. One eighth times eight pi. Hmm. Divide out those eights. And you're left with pi feet. That just means pi, we're going to use the pi as the number. And look at this. Without even touching your calculator, we know, since we know the first several digits, 3.14159, we know right away that to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 3.1. And we're done. All right, exercise number 13, no problems here. Again, we have a central angle, in this case 120. So that means the intercepted arc AB is also 120 degrees. Now we've got this tedious formula up here, but we have really no, let's just make sense of what it means. And of course it means... Um, when I do the substitution, 120, as is pretty obvious, out of 360 is going to be a third. And this is 2 pi r, which simply means the circumference. So this red arc is merely one third of the entire circle. So let's just crank through the arithmetic. One third of 28 pi. And in this particular case, we can't divide out. We've got a 3 in the denominator, so we'll say 28 thirds pi. And then we could pull up our calculator. And let's see if we can do that. We may have to clear off an earlier problem. And 28 divided by 3. So that's your 28 thirds. But leave all the numbers in the register. And then we're going to multiply times. And remember, use the pi key. And there you go. And if we round to the nearest tenth, as you can see, 29 and 3 tenths. Done. Well, here we go with exercise number 21. And we're solving for this measure of this arc, which would be the same as the central angle. But we're trying to find out how many degrees is the measure of arc AB. We know it's actual arc length. So we're going to do this two ways. Let's first do it the very mechanical way. And we're going to set up with this formula that the arc length of AB is the measure of arc AB out of 360 times 2 pi r, or the circumference. Okay, so let's do a substitution. Now, we're not solving. We could make a literal equation, but let's just, let's just solve like this. We're going to replace the measure of the arc AB with the 88 and 73 hundredths, and we know that the radius is 10. So, we can move on here a little bit and you can see what we've done here. I've changed this to an approximation sign because now I've got 20 pi and I've gone with a decimal approximation of 20 pi right here. And right away you see what we're going to do next. Let's divide both sides. Of, uh, sorry, let's yes, yeah, so let's divide both sides of the equation by 20 pi. And we've got this decimal equivalent. Now I'm keeping this in the registers of the calculator. I'm not really using 0.14. I'm just showing you that for the process. If I had 8.73, I would, in dividing by uh, 62 and 83 hundredths, I may keep more uh, digits in the calculator. Then, of course, I'm going to multiply both sides by 360. And I get this. Hmm. Interesting. Um, because that's going to round up to 51. But let's what? Watch what happens when we use this with proportion. Now let's try solving this with a proportion. Uh, here we've got this arc. We already have a decimal e or answer for this arc. We say the measure of this red arc, 8 and 73 hundredths of a unit. 
And we know that there's a, we'll say that that is to a full circle, which would be capital C or circumference, as X, the central angle of this intercepted arc, is to a whole circle, which we know is 360 degrees. So with this proportion, we could, well, we, let's change circumference a little bit. We know this, we've got this radius of 10, 2 pi r, so the circumference is 20 pi. So I've got 8 and 73 hundredths, this is 20 pi, as x is to 360. Easy squeezy, let's go. Whoa, cross product. The product of the red, oops, sorry there. The product of the red equals the product of the blue. So let's pull out our candy dandy calculator as we all love to do. And let's, and I know how you guys do this. You multiply the blue ones here and you can divide by 20 pi. So let's go 360 times eight and 73 hundredths. Now that's the product of the blue over here. Now 20 pi x is equal to that. So I have to divide this by 20 pi. Now a calculator mistake, this is where most of you are going wrong. Um, you can divide by, now you're going to take this answer, you're going to divide by 20 pi. If you just type, you, if you want to say 20 pi, you're going to need to use parentheses, or you can divide by 20 and then divide by pi. Same thing. And you can see you've got 50 and, well, it's the nearest hundredth, one, two hundredths. But we're going to the nearest tenth, and we're going to say that that is 50 degrees. Well, here we go in exercise 22. We're solving for the entire circumference. We're given the length of the red arc, seven and a half linear units. And we know the central angle, or actually the angle of the arc, either way, is 76 degrees. So, if I took this very mechanical formula and did my substitutions, it would look like this. I've got the 7.5 for the arc length, 76 for the measure of CD, and I'm going to replace 2 pi r with the circumference, because after all, that's what we're solving for. But you know, you can do this, but you can do it on your own, because... There's an easier way. That's what I want to do. I'm going to ditch this. I just want to look at it this way. Our good friends, the proportions. Seven and a half, the red arc, is to the entire circumference, as 76 degrees is to a full 360. Can't get any easier than that. And then we cross multiply, and look what we end up with. Of course, we've got 76 times circumference equals this product. And then we pull up our handy dandy calculators. And let's go to town there. We can just say it's 360. And we'll multiply that times 7.5. And, and then we'll take that product and we'll divide by 76. And you can see we have roughly 35 and a half. And depending on what place value we wanted to round to, and if we want to round to tenths, five tenths, to hundreds, 53 hundreds, etc. So, and then we just round accordingly, and then we're done. Now let's solve for the radius of this circle. And well, this is exercise 23. We're given a few different things, this red arc, which is a major arc greater than 180. We're going to sh first show the setup for the mechanical. The arc length of LM, I should say, I should have had three letters, that's a major arc, is equal to its measure over 360 times the circumference. Okay, we know the formula. And we're going to substitute. So we're going to take the 3895 and we'll set 260. So we know the fractional part of that circumference. And we could solve it that way, but we won't, because there's an easier way. And I'm just going to set it up for you. Well, so you can do it that way if you want. You can do this method. It's fine. But what about this? 
38 and 95 hundredths, this red arc, is to a full circle, known as 2 pi r, as 260 degrees is to 360. Now, that's all we got to do. And then just do the cross product. And the cross product there, we'll, we're going to pull up our handy dandy calculators there, and we're going to clear them out. Let's get the product of the red first. 38 and 95 hundredths times 360 and that's going to equal the product of the red sure I've got the right numbers in there 3895 yeah, yeah sounds good so now the product of the blue is equal to this now we're solving for R and I know you guys don't like to write anything on paper so we're just going to say well if 2 times pi times R times 260 is equal to this 14,000. I'm just going to divide this 14,022 by all these numbers. 260. Check. Divide by 2. Check. And divide by pi. Here's my pi key. There you go. 8.5833, etc. If to the nearest tenth, I'm guessing that would be 8 and 6 tenths. Well done. Okay, here's the fun problems, uh, number 24 in the exercises. We're trying to find the perimeter of this bizarre figure, and we just first have to realize we've got a 13 and a 13 linear segment there, and we've got this curved surface here with these two semicircles. And of course, as you know, two semicircles make one circle. So I would say it's we've got two 13s and we've got pi times the diameter. And well, I suppose we could do a decimal approximation if you're interested. And we're done. Well, number 25 in your exercise is another bizarre shape, this shaded region, which of course consists of these two segments here, the sixes and two curves, oops, missed those curves this time, and each of those is clearly a quarter of a circle as indicated by the right angle here. So uh, I guess we could do this. Uh, the perimeter of that blue shape, two sixes, and two pi r is the circumference of a circle, but we're taking half of it because we have a quarter circle and a quarter circle. So why don't we just simplify that a little bit? and say it's 12 plus 3 pi. And if you need a decimal equivalent, you can handle that. 